Unfortunately, this disease is still slowly spreading, and it's important to be aware of its existence. By gaining a better understanding of the various types of seher, each with its own specific purpose, you can take steps to protect yourselves from its harmful effects. Scholars have identified eight different categories of seher, but one of them stands out above the rest, known as seher al-haqiqi. This seher can be further classified into many categories, which clearly shows how they're used. Number 1. Al-Sihr al-Ma'kul wal mashroob This type of black magic can be ingested through food or drink and enters the body with a few jinn accompanying it to protect the spell. These jinn attach themselves to the sihr and hold it in place with threads. However, a significant issue with this type of sihr is that the jinn are unable to leave the body as long as the black magic persists. Number 2. Al-Sihr al marshush this form of black magic is often applied by spraying it near the front door, inside the bedroom, throughout the house, or even inside the car. In some cases, the sorcerer may also pour it along a path or road, knowing that you will pass by. Number 3. Sihr al-Tafriq This particular type of black magic aims to create separation between specific individuals, its purpose could be to drive apart a husband and wife, a mother and child, or even two friends. The spell is highly versatile, with many possible combinations, and has unfortunately caused irreparable damage to countless families. A sihr al-ma'kul wal mashroob or a sihr al-marshush are the most frequently used methods for this type of black magic. However, sorcerers may also use alternative techniques including the use of photographs or clothing. Number 4. Sihr Ta'atil Al-Zawaj This specific form of black magic is used to prevent individuals from getting married. Typically, someone who is envious and malicious seeks the help of a sahir to cast a curse. The sorcerer will send a jinn to pursue the targeted person and attempt to possess their body. If successful, the jinn will cause the victim to experience a sense of unease and discomfort whenever a potential suitor approaches them with the intention of marriage. If possession fails, the jinn will resort to using illusions to create a sense of an attractiveness between the man and woman. This can manifest in different ways, such as making them feel repulsed or indifferent towards each other. The jinn may also manipulate their thoughts, causing them to argue or disagree over small things ultimately hindering any potential relationship and preventing marriage. Number 5. Al-Sihr al-Masmoom This type of black magic is used in incense and perfume. When someone smells or inhales these particular scents, they can be affected by the sihr, which is believed to target the area around the nose. Number 6. Al-Sihr al-Madfoon This form of black magic is typically buried underground often in a grave, and is considered to be one of the most powerful forms of sihr that a sorcerer can perform. It's important to pay close attention to who washes and buries your deceased family members. This is because sorcerers are often approached to perform sihr on the deceased in the grave. Number 7. A sihr al-Maqood Knots is a common type of black magic, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us about its evil in Surah Al-Falaq verse 4. وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ And from the evil of those which is casting spells by blowing onto knots. This method is often used to block people from achieving certain things, such as working, getting married, having children, or being intimate with their spouse. Besides sorcerers, the shayateen also use knots. A clear example is the Fajr prayer. In a well-known hadith narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, and also in Sahih Muslim and Sunan Ibn Majah, the Prophet wasallam said, When one of you goes to sleep, the shaitan ties three knots at the back of his neck and says, You have a long night, so go to sleep. If he wakes up and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one knot is untied. If he performs the wudu, another knot is untied. If he then prays, the third knot is untied. And he starts his morning with a pure soul, a nafs at tayyib. But if he neglects it, he will start his morning lazy and with a corrupt soul. 
النفس الخبيث narrated by البخاري number eight سحر المحبة this form of black magic is used when a person asks a sorcerer to make another person fall in love with them and obey their every command the sahir typically requests an unwashed clothing item or a photo of the person if these items are not available they may only ask for the target's mother's name this spell used on men is called sihr at tahjiz and causes them to be unable to resist the person who requested the spell they constantly desire to have sexual intercourse with that person and no one else the prophet peace be upon him said verily ruqa amulets and that tiwala are shirk this means that seeking the help of sorcerers or using love potions is considered a form of polytheism which is a grave sin in islam it is important to note that the ruqa being referred here is not the same as the ruqya that is mentioned in the quran and sunnah rather it specifically refers to the practice of using incantations performed with the help of devils by sorcerers number nine this particular type of black magic is often associated with infertility but it differs from medical infertility where doctors are unable to identify a clear cause instead this type of sihr involves the presence of a jinn that takes up residence in a woman's uterus and targets either her ovaries or her partner's genitals. This can result in significant difficulties in conceiving or carrying a pregnancy to term. Unfortunately, women who have been affected by this type of black magic may also experience frequent miscarriages, as the jinn can disrupt the normal functioning of the reproductive system. Number 10. Sihr al-Rabd this form of black magic is intended to create mystical knots that hinder sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. It consists of two separate spells, one for the man and one for the woman. To cast a spell on a man, the sorcerer sends a jinn to take up residence in his mind, specifically in the area that regulates sexual impulses. The jinn's presence often results in a man losing interest in his spells, making it difficult or impossible for him to engage in sexual activity even if he previously initiated it. In regards to the woman, there exist five types of rabd. The first type, rabd al mana, where the jinn tightly holds the woman's thighs together and preventing her from engaging in intercourse with her husband. The woman has no control over this, as it is the work of the jinn. The second type, rabd al tabalud, where the jinn causes the woman to feel no sexual stimulation or excitement when her husband tries to engage in intercourse with her. The woman feels paralyzed and unable to enjoy sexual relations with her husband. The third type, Rabd al-Nazif, in which the woman experiences intense bleeding from her uterus when her husband attempts to approach her sexually. There is also a similar form of black magic known as Sihr al-Istihada. The difference between the two is that the former occurs only during sexual intercourse, while the latter can last for days. The fourth type, Rabd al where the man cannot complete penetration due to encountering a piece of flesh that prevents it. The fifth type, Rabd al-Ta'wir, which occurs when a man marries a virgin, and the jinn creates doubt and discord by making it seem like the woman is no longer a virgin. The man feels like the woman's genitals are too wide during penetration, leading him to doubt her virginity. When the sihr is broken, the woman's body returns to normal. Sorcerers often combine sihr al-rabd with sihr al-tafriq in order to achieve maximum effectiveness in their spells. This combination of magic is believed to create a more potent and long-lasting effect on the targeted couple, leading to significant disruptions in their relationship. It's clear that the topic of black magic is complex and how it can manifest in you. It also indicates how important it is to remove any negative effects of the sihr from the body. Be sure to tune in to our next video for more information on the symptoms of sihr and how to effectively treat it with the will of Allah.